Hi everyone, I'm Joseph, and welcome to the Box of Inspirations show. Today's guest is no other than Charlotte Greenman. Charlotte is helping business owners and sales professionals to convert cold conversations into uh, loyal customers. She has over 20 years of experience and is specializing in different forms of lead generation. And she's also a speaker. So Charlotte, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on. And today uh, we, will, we will focus a lot on generating hot leads as, as that's your expertise and how to convert them into real clients. But before we dig into the good stuff, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and what you do? Okay, thank you. Um, Well, what I do is I work with business owners and sales professionals, and that's to generate leads. It's to increase their sales using a lot of sales and marketing techniques. And I I specialize in telemarketing and using the phone to create clients. And and that could be to follow up attracting the clients, or it could be generating from completely cold calls Um, and anything in between, really. Perfect. And generating hot leads is uh, something we all try to do, but uh, do you see a common mistake people make? Can you see a pattern from, uh, from the business owners you help? Uh, yes. A lot of the time, um, I find that business owners try and sell everything they do all in one go. So perhaps like a business coach, uh, they could help a lot of different types of businesses in a lot of different industries, and that's size um, as as well as type. Um, So what they actually need to do is look at identifying target markets, look at having one focus, and then from that, you need to be looking at uh, having one message. So I think that's where people try and be something to everybody rather than having different target markets to get the right message to the right people. And, and that's the easiest way to create clients. That's a great example. People having uh, too much in their play, trying to figure out too many things at the same time. And usually nothing is happening. Uh, you, you, you miss. It's like the scattergun approach. You don't get anything. You get the odd one. Um, whereas, you know, you really need to focus. Exactly. Uh, do you think it's possible to still do different stuff, but um, maybe to focus and, and target them to different people so it's more clear f- for uh, the target audience what steps to take instead of uh, them having a bunch of information uh, coming their way? Uh, Yeah, definitely. I think everybody's got different target markets. You can have a number of target markets or a number of scenarios where people might be in a certain situation in a stage in their life or in their business. But what you need to do is make sure that your message or your marketing materials, you package your products and services to that person or to that situation. But then you can replicate that across your business to have different target markets um, so yes, but you just have to have that focus because then they will respond and say, that's me, this is what I want. And it just makes the sale and the, the client to create a lot easier and quicker, actually. Mm, yeah. And you are focusing a lot on uh, converting telephone conversations. How important is it to have a good script and what goes into, into a good one? It's vital. I mean, a lot of people just say, oh, I'll pick up the phone. I'll see what happens. I'll just have a chat with them. But the problem with that is there's no measurement. So you'll have a conversation, but you really need to have a script. Not that you follow word for word, but a framework. I like to call it a framework so that you know your intro, you know that your your message to them, you know the hook that you're going to use. Um, And where people fall down is actually when objections start happening and they fumble on the answers and think, oh, I don't know, or I wish I'd said that. Mm -hmm. If you've got a script, if you've got your um, introduction happening, if you've got your your hook, if you've got the answers to all the objections you could possibly think of, you're prepared for that conversation and you can be in control of it a lot more and you actually convert a lot more Uh, conversations that way and I think uh, focusing as we talked before focusing on 
just one thing and focusing on delivering that message as good as possible according to the target audience. I think it, that makes it uh, easier to being able to answer all the different questions that your target audience has. Definitely. And, and they will come up with different questions depending on which target market they're in or which, which sector they're in. And that, that's really important because if you're not prepared, you'll just fluff it and then nothing will come out of it. And then you'll say it won't work. You won't want to do them. You won't have the confidence to pick up the phone. But having a script there will literally just make sure everything's okay, give you the confidence to move forward and convert a lot more calls. Can you see different patterns on converting through the phone and converting through email or social media? Can you hear me? Oh, just about, yes, yes. <laughs> <You're back. laughs> Perfect. So I, I can repeat the question. Uh, can you see any, any patterns on converting through the phone or converting through email or social media instead? Um, yes, I mean, the, the, the patterns um, need to be on the phone. It's about a two-way conversation. That's the best way that you can have a conversation with someone. You can ask questions. You can interact with them, build trust, build rapport. It's quicker, it's easier, and it's friendlier. If you're starting to use social media and email, it's very much one way. It's, it's whatever you put down on the paper and they read or put on the screen, that's the only message they're going to get. If you don't get that right, they could qualify themselves out really quickly. So what I suggest is to use the phone to back up the social media and the emails and the other sort of leads and perhaps the one-way conversations. Um, just use both, but just be aware that you can't achieve everything in social media and email that you can by using the phone. Yeah, and there's a lot of experts doing that, having uh, people go through a funnel or from social media or email. And if they have any questions or uh, need that, that extra push, they have a telephone number they can reach out to and have a more personal co connection and personal conversation with uh, the, the client or hopefully uh, um, Definitely. And, and it's the same when you've got like um, a chat facility on your, your website, for instance. So it's really good to have funnels. It's really good to have all these leads coming in because they're the warm leads, the hot leads, the people that are interested in what you do. Just pick up the phone and close it is a lot easier if they've already got that part of the sales process out the way and they've done the research on you. It's just a case of having a conversation to close the sale. And what steps do you usually want uh, the, the, the visitor to take or to go through uh, in order for you to convert them into loyal clients and customers? There's quite a few steps. Um, I do a client creation roadmap and that's uh, eight steps um, start to finish. But essentially you're looking at making sure you get the right message making sure that your elevator pitch for the short time, but also the longer message on your website and any of your social media profiles, they all match. They all scream out to your target market that you can help them and you're the best person for that. You also need to look at where your target, target market actually hang out. Are you in those places? Are you on the Facebook groups if they're there? Are you networking in person if they're there? So, You've really got to make sure that all of these little pieces fit together. Um, and then you start using your social media to start drawing them in. And you can start selling ethically to them. And, and that's one of the big steps that a lot of people miss or, or don't quite get right is probably the answer. You know, they sell for the sake of the sale or they end up trying to be a bit desperate saying, you know, I really need this sale. I, you know, I need to make targets. But actually, you need to offer a win-win situation. You need to offer that solution to their problem. So you need to be listening to their problem before you offer that solution. Otherwise, there's no trust and you're just going to be a salesperson. You won't get repeat business. You don't get clients for life that way. And that's so important to being able to understand the client, the, the customer, uh, to being able to uh, understand what they need and uh, trying to speak their language 
Uh, yes, and yes definitely. And, and it makes the sale easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think also I agree with you that having a two-way conversation instead of just a one-way is also very important. Yeah, and it, the, it shortens the sales process down so much, you know, and you're not guessing what they're thinking. You're not guessing about what they would perhaps like. You know there and then you can tailor what you say to them, tailor the package and solution. Um, it's hard for them to say no because you've solved their problem. You have the answer. Um, it's just a case of when and where and, and if your price matches, you know, their budget. Exactly. So, Charlotte, before we hit the last round of this interview, mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit more about where people can find you to connect more with you online. Okay. Um, I suppose the best place is I'm, uh, I've got a Client Creation Academy. Um, so if you put in clientcreationacademy.com, that will go through to a website where there's a lot of free training videos. There's more information on the Set Your Cold Calling on Fire and Client Creation Roadmap uh, training courses that I do. Uh, they're on, they're very, all, it's, well, it's all available online. There's also Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter and Pinterest. And that the handles for those are at creating clients. Um, and finally, I do have a Facebook group and that's called Generating Clients for Life. And you can find me as well in that Facebook group and everything will be linked below this interview. So it's now time for the last round, which I call the unexpected three, where okay. I would basically ask you three random questions. So are you ready? I am ready. Yes. Yes. Number one, converting cold leads through telephone or social media. Um, I would say the telephone hundred percent of the time. However, I would also use the social media because you get a wider audience. You can get an unexpected audience. So if you were using hashtags in Twitter, for instance. Um, so I think you would use both, but in order to close sales and understand and speak to the client at the last moment, definitely the telephone. Number two, what is one of your favorite resources or online tools right now that you are using? The biggest one I'm using is called Trello. Um, it's a bit like Pinterest where you've got boards, you've got tasks, you've got cards, but it's actually um, sort of project management and you can put time frames to things and put it in a calendar. So I use it with my clients to have uh, an accountability calendar. So I can keep an eye on what they're doing. I can tell them, you know, what they should be doing next. And it's got a messenger sort of feature as well so that you can tag people in and have conversations um, and you don't have to share everything. You can just share uh, sort of specific projects. But, but that's it at the moment. Trello is my, my thing. <laughs> Trello is a great resource. It's something I, I'm using as well. Oh, brilliant. So number three, take us back to the day you decided to, to go your own way. With the experience and the knowledge that you have today, what one advice would you give yourself back then? I said, well, I started my business 10 years ago um, and I've done what a lot of business owners do, which is sort of go along and try and figure it out yourself for quite a few years. And um, I think if I could go back and do this all over again, the, the biggest thing I would do is I would want somebody to give me a plan, the step by step, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to put in place. This is what you need to say. This is how you need to say it. Um, I've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money trying things out. So I think if, if someone could have given me a plan and said, this is how you create a client, this is how you keep them, this is how you get repeat business, that would have been a lot easier sort of 10 years ago and I'd mm -hmm. be a lot richer now as well <laughs> if I'd put it in place <laughs> all that time ago. <laughs> so basically find someone that can help you understand your audience and someone that, that can help you map out a step-by-step -step plan uh, that you can take action on. And I think that's a good wrap for this interview. And Charlotte, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. And thank you all for tuning in. Bye.